Well, welcome everyone uh, to today's uh, event uh, for the Empower Teachers to Bring Curriculum to Life webinar. Uh, today we're joined by our uh, David Lopez, uh, who's our Action Tech uh, Screen Beam Senior Manager for Strategic Alliances for Education. And our special guest uh, is uh, Joe Archer, who is a uh, Microsoft Innovator Educator Expert. Uh, this uh, session today will uh, also be recorded and will be made available on our resources page. Uh, but then we will also email this to uh, all our registrants as well. We encourage your attendees to submit your questions uh, through the chat box. And if we have time, we will go through uh, them and uh, address it. For any questions that we're not able to get to, uh, we will uh, email it to you uh, as well. Uh, to, uh, so let's get started. I'll hand it over to uh, David. Go ahead, David. Okay, okay, hold on one second. There we go. Uh, how, I hope everybody's doing well. Thank you all for, for joining us um, today. We appreciate uh, you taking time out of your day to be able to uh, to talk with us uh, this evening. Well, it's evening for me. It's afternoon uh, for some of you. Um, uh, but uh, I'm here in Florida, and uh, Joe Archer, who's with us, is uh, is uh, up in Canada, uh, up in the uh, the Great White North, and uh, he's going to be joining us in in a little bit after after I go through my part. But uh, it's good to have him with us as well as all those who are on the line. So thank you for for taking the time to uh, to be with us today. Um, so a little bit about as far as the agenda, what we're going to cover today. Um, I'm going to go through kind of a, a quick overview of what I what I call the three layers of the three levels or layers of wireless display, um, and kind of give a, a, an overview. Most of you who are on the call um, already have a good understanding of of what it is, of what wireless display is, of what screen beam is, and how we work. Uh, but my intention with this is really to kind of uh, shift a little bit uh, the discussion and to make sure that all those levels of understanding are there. So, you know, what you can do with wireless display, what you can do with your devices, and kind of looking at it in the same, you know, in the way that we uh, look at it from a, a teaching perspective. And myself as a former teacher, um, you know, the way I kind of uh, frame it with everybody um, and the way that... Uh, you know, the way we have a, you know, kind of discussion around uh, using it in the classroom. So the first level or layer that I'll talk about is is really just the, the first one which you're all familiar with, uh, which is the basic understanding, right, of, of connecting to a display, right? So anybody, everybody knows, most people who are on the call, if you've connected to a screen beam, uh, you know it's a, it's a simple process. You go into your action center, uh, you connect up after you've connected it to your display, and you're really, really ready to go. And and having that mirroring is a fantastic feature. It's what you know what we're built around is being able to mirror your display, being able to show on your screen uh, what's on your screen on the big screen, and uh, be able to have that mobility uh, in the classroom, the ability to move around, the ability to not be tethered to the front of the room. Um, and it looks like you're not seeing my screen, so I'm going to make sure you do. And give me one second here. There we go. Hopefully that's uh, on track. And somebody give me a thumbs up if we're if we're good to go on my screen. All, all good. Dude. All right. Looks like we're good. Thank you. Um, so yeah. So yeah. So I mean, as again, I was showing here, walking through the uh, you know the, the connection is a really simple process. Um, and you have that mirroring capability, and that's that first part of that first layer. But I, I like to take it a step further and really looking at using the whole device. And, and some of the examples that I give, and Joe and I will talk about this, I think, when we get on, on together. Uh, but I, I really like to look at, you know, even something as simple as, you know, using a, uh, the, the web camera on your device. And in this case, my, the example that I'm using right now is if I have a makerspace in my classroom or maybe I'm in a media center where they're, the maker spaces are set up um, and you have students working at different tables and you want to be able to show, hey, uh, these students over here, hey, take a look at what, what these guys are doing. Uh, what oftentimes happens if I say to a group of students, oh man, that looks really cool. All the other students want to get up and leave their place and come and see, you know, crowd around the table. Uh, but one of the neat things I could do with, with, with ScreenBeam and, and Windows 10 is I can turn on my webcam 
right? And I can just shoot a picture, uh, a live picture of what's going on uh, around the room and live video. And that's one of the benefits of, of working with Streambeam and not having to use all the bandwidth up that's in your classroom. I can do live video really quickly and really easily uh, because we're not running over your infrastructure. We're just doing a point-to-point -point session. So even in, a, even in a crowded environment where there's lots of things going on, I can turn on my camera. I can share live video of what's going on at this table. I can share live video of what's going on at the next table. And everybody can kind of take part and then go back to what they're doing. And I think Joe's going to give us some examples of how he uses something like that um, you know, in his classroom as well um, in, in really just kind of expanding the idea of not just mirroring PowerPoints and OneNote, uh, which those are two great tools, but even just something as simple as this, taking a picture of a document and then starting to write on it, uh, those kind of things, it makes it, turns your, your device into a mobile, uh, live mobile document camera. And that in and of itself is a great feature to kind of turn that on in your heads and say, hey, that makes more sense than me having to be, again, when I want to use a document camera or I want to show video of something going on or I want to do something a little bit different in my classroom, uh, to kind of hook the students into something, this is a way to do that really quickly and easily. So that's that first layer, but maybe a little bit deeper than what you're normally used to looking at when you think about screen beam. Uh, the second layer that I talk about, oh, and, and I, I will show this slide just to say that you know the reason we're able to do that really well is because of our, you know, our, the fact that we don't have to push on any of that data, you know, over the network. Um, the second layer that I like to talk about is, is around the power of feedback. Um, and I like to follow a guy named John Hattie um, on, online and read some of his, his materials and his books. And, and, and he talks about the idea of constructive feedback. Um, and, and he works through with the several different educators and, and academics about, you know, about what that feedback is and what it means in the classroom and how it can benefit students. He talks about relevant feedback, real-time feedback, um, and, and what, what the most effective kind of feedback is. Um, but, as, but when I do that with technology, it gets a little bit harder if I want to do it in real time uh, because I'm, I'm either, again, stuck at my computer or I can't go and just interact with each student's computer um, that I, the way that I want to be able to do. Um, I know OneNote can kind of give us some of those, those tools. But even if I'm talking about just looking at anything on their device, it becomes a little more difficult for me to do that as a teacher to give feedback to each student while they're using technology. Uh, one of the ways that we talk about that then when I, when I shift that discussion to wireless display and screen beam is through the power of, of Windows 10, the power of screen beam, what, what we allow you to do is have that touchback support. You know, you see that USB cable, you know, normally you're having to have, have that plugged into your computer to get a touch screen to work. So this here on the screen represents a, a touch screen. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can just be a plain touch screen. And I have, for example, my student connected here. Um, you know, my student connected here and the student then is sharing what they're looking at. And as the teacher, I see what they're sharing on the front of the room. Well, one of the things that I'm able to do through ScreenBeam and Windows 10 is I can pick up that inking tool. Um, I can start the inking tools in Windows 10, the screen sketching, and I can immediately start writing on the screen. And you'll notice all that feedback, all that writing that I, that I did on the main screen in the front of the room shows up on the student screen. And we'll show a live example of that in just a minute. Um, but that really, again, is the ability to, to actually interact with the student's computer from the front of the room if you're using a touch screen in your room or an interactive projector. And that's a really powerful thing for teachers to have that kind of that, that magical control of the student's screen, uh, which, again, I, we had a teacher this morning, Jesse Boyce from here in Florida. She said, you know, students really love, she has uh, middle schoolers and they, they really think it's magical when she does stuff like this. And it's like, wow, it really, it's really cool. But in reality, if you're able to give that kind of feedback um, to your students and then move to the next student and move to the next student and give them some feedback, it's really cool because all that inking, once I disconnect that student, it's not an overlay, it's not extra software, it's all built into the operating system and built into ScreenBeam 960. And I can just move on to the next student and all that inking that, that I did on that student's device stays there. And then I can move on to the next student. So that's a really, again, a really important feature to think about that second layer of, of feedback and touchback and being able to do that uh, digitally. 
And then the, the third and the way to do that, again, that's just, just an illustration is is having a, you know, the cord is, is now disconnected from the from the computer instead of having that USB cord. And there's that checkbox, if you've ever noticed that uh, here in Windows 10, it says allow input from a keyboard or mouse. And uh, that's how you get that touch back to work if you're using a, a touch screen and the USB cord in the in your classroom. So so moving on to then that third layer, um, which which I think is very important in the work that we've been doing recently as a company, is is looking at um, the thing uh, called classroom or what I call classroom orchestration. Being able to have a teacher have the ability to to control or orchestrate the devices in in the classroom. Uh, many times, uh, a lot of teachers I taught in a lab environment when I was in in a school in the classroom, and so I was used to having a bunch of screens in front of students, and I found out ways and figured out ways to make it work. But so many teachers now are having to deal with that that aren't used to having screens in front of students. So they, they need a way to be able to orchestrate that. And um, many of them, there are some solutions out there, but many of them keep wireless display separate from orchestration. And what we've actually done is brought those two together. And that's with our, our tool that we, we have called Classroom Commander. And uh, Joe is actually using this in his classroom, so we'll be able to talk to him a little more about that. But I'm going to walk you through, you know, what that means really quickly. You know, we have a piece of software that goes on the teacher's device. There's a software that goes on the student's device. And then you can see in the front of the room, uh, you know, we have the ready to present, which shows me all my students are connected and I'm connected. And then once I, once I connect and I choose to see all my students' screens, me as a teacher, I can, I can be working uh, looking at and monitoring what my students are doing. I could be answering emails while the screen is still kind of in the stasis mode, which we'll, we'll see in just a moment, a little bit up close. And then, um, you know, I can monitor and take a look, zoom in on a student's screen. I can see what they're doing. And if I'm ready for that student to share, I just click one button and I instantaneously that student is mirroring their screen or doing their presentation or sharing their aha moment with the rest of the class uh, right from their desk. And then I can quickly, um, I can pull that back if I want to. Uh, and I'm, get, I'm doing all this, again, because all of my students are connected uh, to the screen beam here in the front of the room. And I have the ability then to just take back the display. So now uh, I can continue with my lesson, uh, sharing and mirroring my screen. Uh, if I notice, uh, for example, I have a couple of students. Oh, one of the students is uh, taking a look at some uh, YouTube videos of baseball season starting up, and uh, they're trying to get their fantasy team together. But uh, you know, I can I can immediately then take a look and say, oh, I want to have a little bit of control, so I want to blank those students' screens. I can silence those screens, and they lock the keyboard, lock the mouse. Uh, but it also gives me the ability to do some simple control things like shutting down all the machines. If I wanted to be able to shut them down, uh, I can do that really quickly and easily. Uh, send a command out, and it will shut down all the devices at the end of the day, for example. Um, I want to be able to uh, send out a website. I can do it that way. Uh, or I want to be able to, um, to uh, open up a program. I can also do something like that. But we really built it to be a, a very streamlined orchestration system, nothing too complicated. Uh, nothing, you can't do all sorts of quizzing and polling and all this other stuff because you have other tools to do that. We built it to be a, a really simple solution for what the teachers need to be able to do, which is see the student screens, have some sort of uh, control. And also, more importantly, I think the best part of this is that the wireless display works really well and gives me that ability to have that student share right to the front of the room really quickly and easily. So uh, to, to what we're going to move on to next is kind of a live uh, demonstration of a live demonstration of this. And I think it's important. What I'm going to show you in just a second is I'm going to show you the screen um, that what Classroom Commander looks like. Uh, so you'll see up close kind of a view of, of what's going on in, in Classroom Commander on the, on the actual um, on the actual teacher screen. And then what you'll also be able to see is uh, the student screens connected. And I've got a monitor here uh, that we'll see on the webcam. Uh, you, well, I'm going to turn the webcam on in just a moment. And I've got a monitor here that's going to be displaying. Um, uh, hold on one second here. There we go. 
I've got a monitor here that's going to be showing you an example of a touchscreen monitor and so uh, how the touchback support works. And then what we'll do is we'll jump right into uh, our conversation with, with Joe. Um, so if I give me one second here, I've just got a couple of, as we know, technology has always has a little bit of hiccup. So I had to restart one of my student devices. Um, but it is up and running here. And I'm going to pull the teacher screen over here. There we go. So now you see, uh, you should see one of the student machines come up here connected. I was just about ready. And there we go. Uh, so now you see the, the, the classroom commander screen. I've got a couple of things running in the background on one of those machines. And actually what the nice thing this shows, because I've got these animations running, is actually showing real-time uh, updates of the student screens, which is another unique feature. We're not just showing little snapshots uh, every 30 seconds. We're actually showing real-time updates. And this is my, this is my teacher view, um, so what the teacher would see, not the students. And then um, I can zoom in on my student screen, so I can take a closer look if I want to, uh, zoom in, see what's going on. In this case, the student's looking at uh, uh, hydrogen bonding, and they're watching. They're looking at a video on on uh, molecules and how they work and how they bond. And I can see real time. And again, this is not mirroring. This is me just kind of taking a peek in on the student screen, so I can see what they're doing. Uh, then I can switch to the next student and say, "Oh, this student's working on, you know, his uh, his model for the three D printer." And you can see as I zoom in on the student's computer, I can I can have a little bit of uh, I can take a peek at what they're doing in real time. Um, and you can see how that works. And then if I want to go back to the main home screen, I can just click home and allow me to, to quickly move back there. Um, and of course, if I had if I had 20 students connected, I could see all 20 screens here, but I've only got so many in my home office here that I can work with. Um, and then I can do, again, simple things like be able to uh, open the website, start a program, uh, shut down, disconnect, and, and even, as I said earlier, silence the student screens here as well. Uh, we also included a little chat feature that we can talk about later if you have any more questions about that. But that gives you a, a view of what that looks like in, in real time. So what I'm going to do is now switch over to my camera. Um, and I'm going to turn that on here. And I got a little bit of a wider view than I was looking for. There we go. Uh, so hopefully uh, someone give me a heads up when you guys can see my camera. Looks good. Okay. Uh, so now I've got the camera ready. And now what I'm going to see is right now I'm in what's called, what I call, again, I talked about earlier, kind of the stasis mode um, in this. And it allows me to, again, have have a uh, just a quick overview. And this behind me is just an example of what a uh, perhaps a, a, a LCD, LED screen in the front of the room um, hanging on the wall. Uh, and this particular one is just a plain touch screen. It's, it's a touch screen and we'll see that in just a second how that works. Um, so I've got it connected to the screen beam here. Um, and it's all, it's all connected here. The USB cord's connected, the HDMI is connected. And right now I'm in teacher mode or stasis mode where the teacher is actually controlling things still. And as soon as I want to connect, I just click one button and you'll see it and should catch up a little bit because the, uh, Internet's a little bit slow to my real time. And now you can see that's my teacher screen showing. And I'm going to jump the classroom commander window over there. Um, so now I have the ability to then, again, as if I'm teaching in this mode, I can either do extended screen mode, which is what I'm in now. So you'll notice uh, in, in extended screen mode, I can, I can show my screen. I can put other screens up there. I can not show my screen or what's going on. And I've actually got three different monitors connected right now. Uh, and so now I'm ready for that student to be able to share. So in this case, I just click on a student. And again, you see that touchback works. I'm not connected to my computer in any way. The USB cord is connected here. I'm only doing all this wirelessly. And I can easily say, OK, I want that student to share their screen. And now that student is mirroring their device. And you saw how quickly uh, that worked. And I'm going to show you again uh, the real-time connection that we've got here. And again, showing you that 
as a teacher, I can, I can touch the screen and it actually is affecting the student screen here. So everything I'm doing in the front of the room is giving that feedback that we talked about. If I want to go a step further and maybe uh, give the students some uh, actual notes on their screen, I can open up uh, Screen Sketch. That's one of the neat things about Windows 10 is inking is built into every single program that you have on your computer because I can do a screen sketch. I can actually just write on anything. And I open up my, my display and I say, okay, I say to the student, you might want to have a, some sort of connector there or you might want to move those two hydrogens closer to the oxygen so they're touching and then that's ready for 3D printing. And I can export that right to my 3D printer. And then I can quickly, uh, because I have, again, because I have Classroom Commander, um, I can quickly, if I find my mouse here. <laughs> One second, where did it go? There we go. I can quickly shift over to the next student. And now the next student is sharing their screen. Oops, that's my screen. Come on now. There we go. And you can see now that next student is share is has their screen up. So it's quickly, uh, again, allows me to quickly shift between the, the two student screens. And uh, as soon as I want to be able to pull that back, I can pull that back really quickly and easily. And it sounds like there's a video playing, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause that. There we go. Um, and so you saw how quickly I shifted back and forth, and then I can, again, easily go ahead and go back and connect to my teacher device. And one second here. Um, if I go back to sharing my teacher screen, I can immediately do that, and I can continue with my lesson. So that gives you um, that gives you a quick uh, overview of Classroom Commander, um, of how that works, and you know what that looks like from a teacher perspective, also from a student perspective, being able to have have that control. Uh, being able to have that orchestration piece uh, all set up and ready to go wirelessly. And, you know, Joe is going to be able to talk a little bit more to that um, here in just a moment. Uh, but hopefully that, that gave you a really good overview and uh, allowed you to see uh, the value of wireless display, those three layers that we talked about of, of touch, of uh, wireless display, using all the tools, of touchback support and also of orchestration. So, Joe, um, are you ready to go? Yep, all set. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Awesome. All, all right, right. Well, thank you for thanks for joining us. I'm going to give you a second just to give a little quick intro for yourself, and then uh, we'll have some we've got we'll have some chat chit chat back and forth, and hopefully be able to share some good information with everybody. So, go ahead and introduce yourself Perfect. for us, Joe. All right, guys. Uh, my name is Joe Archer. I uh, live up here in Canada in uh, Port Dover, Ontario, right off of Lake Erie. Um, I am a Microsoft Innovative Educator, Fellow, Trainer, kind of a jack of all trades with technology, I guess you could say. So um, yeah, uh, last year at the Toronto E2, we were giving, um, we were visiting in there, and uh, we got the Screaming 750. And uh, the next day, I was instantly hooked. So, yeah, if you're uh, interested at all, you you got to check it out more. These things are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, great. So, um, so I've got a couple of pictures to share of your classroom. Let me skip through these slides here. So this is a, a picture of Joe's classroom. Uh, he's doing a, uh, Joe is a big user of Skype in the classroom. Uh, if you're not familiar with Skype in the classroom, it is a, a great teaching tool. Uh, Joe uh, uses it and sings its praises all the time. So um, he certainly mm -hmm. makes good use of it. That's Anthony Salcido uh, there from the Microsoft Education. And um, there's his screen being plugged in uh, there at the front of the room. So he's uh, you know doing a, uh, a wireless uh, Skype session, which again, I think Joe can talk to why that's uh, why that's a valuable tool and how that differs from maybe how he had to do it in the past. 
Um, and uh, you also see here's another kind of a background shot of everything. And uh, these are some pictures that I took, and we can walk through some of these things uh, in just a minute um, as well of, of Joe using. And there's Joe. Uh, with his class and you students are using the screen beam and we'll talk again we can talk more about that so so you've been using screen beam for how long about a year and a half almost uh, about, a year, about a year actually. and a half about a year. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it didn't take you long to learn how to use it correct it was pretty quick and easy for you yeah, I actually was really shocked with the uh, the ease it was kind of jumping in and um, definitely not the expert still dabbling. But uh, yeah, I, you know, when I go and present at different places, they think I'm just amazing and magical and, and whatnot. And really, you, know, you pick it up and I you, you show someone five minutes later, they're able to do the same thing. So it's incredibly easy to use with just a little a quick demonstration and you're off. And you didn't say everything about yourself. You're also a fire uh, firefighter, and you use this in training firemen as well. You use your screen beam stuff in training your your local firemen as well, right? Yeah, it was too funny. We were actually just presenting yesterday at uh, the chiefs meeting for our district, which is eleven dif different uh, district chiefs and deputy chiefs. So there's about twenty. 25, 28 uh, old gray haired gentlemen sitting around. No, not a clue about technology. They had their devices. I connected them all into the screen beam, the uh, classroom commander, and we we're dishing out um, our presentation about technology in the, in the fire service for training and uh, for documentation with inking and whatnot. And they, I was distributing pages right straight to their screens. A couple guys were actually the one guy. Um, uh, he wasn't really engaged, and he was actually looking um, at baseball schedules, and I locked his screen. <laughs> kind of had a freak out. He thought he lost his device, and I'm like, well, you know, this is just like in my classroom. Not a lot of people pay attention, and they got a kick out of that. So it was quite <laughs> funny. You're we like, really? That thing does this? And I'm like, oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, there was quite a few people around that table that were like, how much and when and where can I get this? <laughs> so. Well, awesome. Well, we'll talk more about we'll talk more about that. Uh, so uh, it, it has changed. Uh, in what ways has it really changed the dynamics in your classroom? Talk about things like Skype for Business, things like your students, uh, you know, writing on their on their desks and, and how that works. How has it changed the dynamics in your classroom? I know you were already doing some of that stuff already, but how has ScreenBeam kind of added on to that? So Skype, uh, Skype for business and whatnot, my classroom has always been, you know, project up on the board, everyone pay attention up there. Well, when you get behavior kids or kids that just can't keep their attention on things, it's really hard to, uh, you know, regulate every, all their behaviors and stuff behind the scenes while trying to engage uh, the speaker and whatnot too. So, you know, you pop them on a device, you put earbuds in and they're glued to their screen, which is exactly what the screen is up front. Now, the nice thing about this, and I was able to trial this out about a month back, I was in a school, a rural school, uh, uh, and it's all uh, Mexican Mennonites. Well, their first language is not English. So we were able to put up that translator right in Skype and they could hear uh, the German coming out uh, through um, what was happening in the Skype. So they were able to partake at their actual uh, level ability of understanding within their first language. So they didn't even have the translation to worry about, which was incredible. I honestly didn't think it would work, but um, that was pretty neat. So, so that was has, Skype. How has this, the screen beam changed your use of Skype? Like when it comes to being able to have that mobility of the camera and the device, has that helped in those Skype sessions and made a difference for you? Yeah, yeah. So I'm able to uh, walk around the room while the Skype's going on. So the kids don't have to get up and walk to the front of the room and stand in front of the camera. I can walk over to the kids and we can pose our questions and, you know, show our work, what we're doing. A lot of the stuff I try to, uh, you know, we do some lessons and, and people, guest speakers are, you know, throwing questions at them and asking them to show their work. So I'm able to walk around. Um, take a, a quick snapshot and share that directly with the person we're Skyping with. Um, awesome. And uh, they, they, none of them leave their seat. So it's nice that uh, you, you don't have the management pieces that you typically would in a regular Skype call. Okay. 
And uh, I know one of the things I love that you did in your classroom is you gave your students uh, dry erase markers and they wrote out, in this case, the picture that we see here, uh, they actually writing on, uh, uh, wrote out something on their desk. And I believe what the student doing is doing here is you handed him uh, the device that you took a picture of, uh, of his desk, and you handed him your Surface device, and he's actually showing his work. Is that right? And how has that affected your students? What do they think about that? Like, do they enjoy that? Is that more engaging for them? So yeah, this is uh, exactly that. Uh, my kids do a lot of, uh, I tried not to do the pen and paper tasks. So whiteboard markers on their desks are easily to uh, erase, right? So when I see a, a cool strategy or something that's happening or looks different than the way I teach or explain something, it's always nice for kids to share their ways or unique ways of figuring it out. So in this case, there was a, an example that someone used and one of the kids had said, okay, that's great but how did you make that work? So I handed my device over, my, my Surface Pro over to that particular uh, student and through the picture and the screen beam, uh, he was able to start discuss talking and demonstrating his, uh, his thinking out loud with the digital ink um, and it was live up on the board. Um, and we were using the commander, not uh, the classroom commander to distribute uh, the exact same picture out to other uh, devices too. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's pretty fantastic. And that's one of the things I, I talk about in a lot of using the, the discussions with, with teachers is finding those moments where a student does something that, oh, I would have never thought of doing it that way. But now that student's able to just teach the rest of the class in a way that makes sense to him. And chances are you're going to catch you know, other students get caught up in that as well. Like, oh, well, that makes sense to them. And now, you know, you with, again, you, you can capture that if you wanted to record or do a screen recording of that student doing that. You know, I know there's ways we've used, used tools you use, like, uh, you know, in, in PowerPoint of doing screen recording and Office Mix and things like that, um, that allow you to do that and capture that information live, you know, while they're, you know, while they're doing it. And uh, now you can use that for other students if you want to. So uh, that's that's really fantastic. Yeah, I think the bit, one of my favorite features with the uh, the classroom commander is that ability to freeze people's screens because sometimes as a teacher, you know, they get so engaged, but you need a moment just to okay, guys, just regroup. Let's talk about this real quick. You can freeze a kid's screens, and then you know, if you got extra resources or like a worksheet or you know an an idea or something, you could distribute that. Um, uh, page directly to the kids devices right away or you can open up uh, we use OneNote often in our classroom so the classroom OneNote so which is great because they can pop right in hit a link go to a video go to whatever on everyone's different devices I can freeze that automatically so we can talk and share kids can um, then uh, uh, easily connect with a click of a button uh, and show their work or figure, you know, show what they found out and stuff. So just the ease and uh, accessibility to provide all the students with a voice um, is really empowering for the kids. And I think that's one of the coolest features. Yeah, that's really awesome. And, and I think, uh, you know, you've kind of, as far as classroom commander, you know, it's really, it seems like that, since you're using that in your classroom, it's really helped um, I guess you'd say yes to the question of it's helped you helped you out as a teacher when the students are on their device um, because it's it's hard oftentimes to pull them away um, from them and if you can freeze the screen really quickly talk through something then unfreeze it and then move on with your lesson it really kind of gives you that 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 idea of orchestration really kind of makes sense you know you're orchestrating everything going on when the technology is being used whereas without it um, it's really it makes it a little more difficult, I would think, um, to have to stop students, pull them back, and then you know try to do that manually or try to you know do that verbally. It's hard to do that verbally. Um, and you lose your point, your discussion points within the lesson itself, what you're trying to work through. So it's the classroom management piece that it, it uh, drastically helps with. So automatically you're, you're more engaged as a teacher presenting your material because that's one last thing that you're juggling while trying to, uh, to, 
to teach your points, right? Yeah. And I know I remember having visited your classroom. I know that you had a you you are one of the teachers and there's there's one of these teachers in every school. Maybe there's two or three of them that uh, teachers that the, the school sends particular students to the classroom and says, you, Joe, you're the ones that can handle these students and we'll let everybody else kind of do do everyone else. And then yeah. I think you, you and I talked about that a little bit and and. Um, and not that they're bad students, they just, you know, they need a little extra attention, they need some extra help, uh, some extra love, extra, you know, extra, every, a lot of extra things from, from you as a teacher. Um, I think one of the examples that you talked about is really important in that the student who's writing on the, on the screen right now uh, in this picture, um, gives it gives that student the ability to share from their desk, like you said, um, and if they were using Classroom Commander, this I don't remember if this was a Classroom Commander session or not, but uh, that may have been your device there he's holding. But he's able to he's able to not have to get up and go to the front of the room and do this. Um, he can do that right from there, and that helps a student like that who's who may be having trouble or may has trouble behaving behavior issues to kind of stay contained, to work from where they are, to stay in control, to to have those kind of things. Is that that that's a big benefit for you as well? Would you say and being able to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Like it keeps them regulated, right? Like it's one less thing. Especially those nervous kids who don't like standing up in front of people. They can mm -hmm. sit from their desk with their back still turned to everyone, with their head down and share all their work and whatnot without being in front of a class. So you know, for me, I've got some really shy kids in in this really busy group, um, but. It's those shy kids who typically wouldn't have a voice that wouldn't share that uh, the the screen beam and the classroom commander are really uh, really helpful for those kids because uh, you know so and so typically wouldn't share but now they're known as a math wid. Oh my gosh, this person's got some amazing ideas. I can't wait for you know Brenna or someone to share something next because last time they showed us it was incredible, but she never talks. <laughs> so pretty cool that she can still do that from the comfort of her desk with her head down without mm -hmm. those 30, 30 eyes on her making her nervous and preventing her from taking that leap of faith, I guess. Yeah, that's a great value that we find in, in doing it this way. And again, you're, have, you're able to do this wirelessly. There's no extra cords. There's no extra connections that have to be made. And, and there's no really the software is kind of in the background, so they don't really see it. Um, they're just able to, you're just able to have that magical control and you've got multiple grade levels in your classroom as well, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So office mix is great because I can have like, uh, pages, uh, set up for grade fives and grade sixes and they can do their works, uh, in each section and I can say, okay, grade sixes, keep working. Grade fives, here we go and distribute mm -hmm. their pages and have it up and running. And okay, grade fives, you're off to the races, go, go nuts. Okay, grade sixes, freeze their screens, eyes up here. We're gonna look at Cole's work today because what he just did was crazy amazing. Mm -hmm. So, and then I've got Cole demonstrating and sharing with digital ink up on the screen, up on in front of the classroom and on all the other student devices live. So it's uh, it's amazing for that split classroom, which I mean, ninety percent of our classrooms in Canada are split classrooms now. So to manage yeah. a split classroom is so much easier with screen beam. Yeah, I had some video of all that of all that happening, and and it's really just neat to see, uh, you know, the students working. Um, there was another, I think this other video here. I don't know how well you guys can see, but again, that's you know, live view of the students sharing uh you know sharing their screens and um let's skip up here you know there he is writing uh on the desk and uh you know sharing right inside of uh you know on the surface using the screen beam and and uh the surface device or the, the tablet device that he's using um so so you, you 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 like classroom commander we've talked about it quite a bit and and how you use it in your classroom um and your students being able to, to being able to orchestrate those devices, and that's really it seems like that's really kind of made a big impact on on you and your students. Um, do they have any feedback for you on that kind of stuff? Like, do they enjoy it and they like it? 
Uh, yeah, I often hear from them, uh, if I'm not using it, um, why isn't it up? Mr. Archer, we, we need to get it up because <laughs> it's okay to work or, you know, we want to be able to freeze so-and-so screen because you know they're going to be silly. And I'm like, oh, right, yeah. <laughs> so, and it's quite cool because the kids are, you know, sharing their experiences out at recess or in the halls and stuff. And then other class, uh, other classes are walking by and kids pop in. I leave the door open and kids pop in or just are amazed by some of the stuff that the kids are able to do with the click of a button, right? So yeah. they're engaged and it gets other people interested and, you know, it's, it's kind of contagious <laughs> in, a, in, a, in some way. <laughs> yeah. Um, for teachers who are on right now and those who are looking at using this in their classroom, uh, are there any particular apps that that you like using that have enhanced or that screen beam has enhanced? I know you talked about office mix, which is one of them for sure. Um, you talked about uh, Skype in the classroom. Um, is there any other apps that you'd recommend or applications that you recommend? OneNote is also one of them. Anything else that you yeah. recommend using that has screen beam as well? Absolutely. OneNote's uh, very fluid in there uh, with all the learning tools for dictation for some kids who have problems writing if they're on IEPs, individual education plans in Canada. Um, or, so instead of having a scribe, they can dictate and you can see it live what they're saying. Um, they can have the immersive reader rolling. Um, a lot of my kids really enjoy the Mathies apps. Um, so you can uh, access that at mathies.com. There's mm -hmm. so many things there, like the Cuisinart rods and the Rec and Rex and whatnot, and uh, kids can demonstrate their their understanding or their concepts or you know how they're problem solving things in Mathies um, within the classroom commander and whatnot. So Mathies is another good one. Nearpod, Kahoot, Kahoot's quite fun. Yeah, and I know your students. Uh, those are all great ones. I know your students use Minecraft. Uh, a lot is is that been a, uh, have we used that with with screen beam as well kind of doing that wirelessly also yeah we're, so we started dabbling it was a little bit before christmas with uh minecraft and it was really cool because um uh i could do up the classroom commander so everyone could see um, my screen up on the front board and we would have uh you know teams of two or three on one computer so they'd be talking collaborating and every once in a while, like every couple minutes, I, you know, the timer would go off and one of the three people could go up at the front of the board and take a peek on uh, the other classroom devices, what people are doing. And if they had any questions, I was able to um, pop into so-and-so screen and say, hey, Cole, or hey, Carson, do you mind sharing what you're doing and, you know, explaining your work and, and how is it working for you and, and whatnot. And, and then uh, those kids are able to go back and you know tweak their work and um, uh, you, while using Carson or Coles or many other kids' ideas and uh, making their work that much uh, stronger, deeper, um, a lot, a lot better. So awesome. And uh, so, if if you had to, if you had to teach in a classroom that didn't have Screen Beam, would that be like a a really tough thing for oh, you God. to do now? <laughs> yeah i i what's the term i use now uh there's a every once in a while my friend across the hall comes over and asks to borrow it and i i always let her use it but i always say okay now we're going back in the dark ages guys <laughs> um I, you're an archaic teacher to some degree once that leaves your classroom um the one day she took it for a presentation she was doing at the swim swimming pool uh, with her instructors that she was teaching on the side and she forgot it there and it took two days to get back. Oh boy, was I ever lost. <laughs> it was fierce. Oh. I actually went back to the old school um, handouts, paper, photocopies and, and whatnot. And the kids were like, no, bring it back. <laughs> well, it's, it's good. And hopefully that won't happen again. Hopefully we can uh, make sure your district, uh, you know, kind of pushes it out to everybody. So nobody has to, uh, <laughs> nobody has to go, go, go without. Um, uh, we're working on it. So um, are there any key takeaways before we kind of, we're going to give people a chance if they have any questions to ask them. I know folks who are on the line, if you want to ask any questions, uh, you can do so within uh, the, the webinar program. 
Uh, you can type in your questions um, or uh, right there inside the screen. So if you have any questions for Joe or for myself, uh, please feel free to, to ask those. But Joe, are there any just key takeaways uh, you'd like to share with teachers about your ScreenBeam experience? Um, anything in particular? You don't have to, but is there anything you, know, you want? To, anything else I you want to share? I think the biggest thing is it's really reduced classroom management. Um, so you're able to focus in on your lessons and able to really dive in and get a little more one-on-one -on -one time with the kids, provide a little more feedback to them, um, get a lot more documentation as a teacher, because that's what we want, right? Like all those photos, all those little videos, those snippets of uh, the learning in real time. Um, this, the, the classroom commander, the screen beam allows me to do this. So the amount of documentation I have now compared to when I didn't have the screen beam is ridiculous. It's actually, uh, I, I have so much sometimes that it's hard to pick what's the best one to use or the best piece to use. Yeah, that definitely, uh, oops, I lost my screen here. One second. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Ah, where'd my PowerPoint go? There we go. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's a great uh, great example, Joe. Thank you so much for uh, for taking the time to uh, to be with us. I know you're uh, you're going to be with us this morning, and we got a little bit of a mix up there. But um, let's see. Um, the question there is one question: uh, Can I display a particular student's work on his or her classmates' devices as well? Uh, currently, we don't have that feature. I know that is one of the top recommended uh, features that we've had, and I, I believe, I don't know if Mike's on the line, uh, if we can speak to anything about that uh, right now, but uh, if Mike or Scott's on the line. Um, but I, I know we've been, we've been talking about that quite a bit. Uh, is there any other information that anyone can provide who's on the line from Action Tech? Yeah, absolutely. So Classroom Commander is, uh, there's a lot of feature requests in for Classroom Commander, and that is definitely one of the top requests is really being able to broadcast from screen to screen. And so that's something that we're looking at. And uh, um, there's there's a lot of other good stuff out there as well. The great thing about, you know, our, um, our users is that they've really formed a, a great community as, you know, educators like um, Joe and David and, you know, thousands and thousands of other educators around the world use these technologies on a daily basis. Um, you know, we get little notes, we receive tweets, various things. Hey, you know, I came up with this great idea or one of our students suggested this. And, you know, we take that all and we really start to look at it and think about how can we, you know, improve on the product and just continue to make, uh, you know, make it more useful. Um, you know, and for us, the, the number one question really is, you know, does this assist um, our goal of improving learning outcomes with the technology? And so, you know, if you have suggestions, um, it's also great to hear, you know, anecdotally, you know, kind of at a minimum, what do you think um, as far as results uh, are concerned? Okay. And is there any other questions that have come through? Um, I don't see any. Um, so uh, a couple things, uh, if you want to follow, uh, Joe, um, his uh, Twitter feeds on there, myself, mine's on there at screenbeam.com. If you don't already follow, it's great, great information. Uh, some great, uh, 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 documentation things that we put out there. So hopefully you get a chance to, uh, to follow us on Twitter if you don't already. Uh, my email is down there as well. My contact information is there, dlopezatactiontech.com. Please feel free to uh, to reach out to me if you have any questions. If you'd like to have a presentation like this uh, for your uh, school district or for your school or whatever entity that you're working with, I'm happy to. We're happy to help out. We're happy to work with you in any way. Um, and uh, hopefully, we'll get a chance to do that. Joe, uh, thank you so much for uh taking the time we really appreciate it and it's it's good to, it's good to hear your voice and good to talk to you again hopefully uh won't be too long before i'm up there in canada or uh maybe you come down here to florida to visit <laughs> for sure thanks for having me all right uh, without... <laughs> hey was that one of the twins 
That's one of the girls, yeah. One of the girls. Okay. Yeah, Joe's also got a set of twins and uh, one more. Yeah, Xander's, Xander's seven and the girls are five. We're busy. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll let you get back to, uh, let you get back to them. Uh, and thank you again. Um, without anything else, uh, Gil, I'll let you close things out. And uh, again, appreciate everyone's time on the call today. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Happy teaching. Thank you, everyone.